So we invite to the stage Tony Ross Hlawe, Emily Senna, and Ingrid Stegemann, if they are here, all of you? Okay, excellent. And they will be talking about Osiris, Tears, Two, and Iris, introducing major new EC-funded initiative to boost reproducibility of research. The stage is yours. Thank you. So I'm Tony Ross Hlawe from uh, TU Graz, and with us, um, Professor Emily Stenner and uh, Professor or Associate Professor Inga Stegemann um, of Edinburgh University and Utrecht University. We don't have any really, really cool findings to share with you today. Um, what we want to share with you today, which is really, really cool, is that we've got a bunch of money to study a lot of really, really cool things with some really, really cool people. So we're just going to run through that. And then if you want to find out more, maybe you can come and talk uh, with us um, over coffee or lunch. We don't need to go through this. So re uh, we'll talk about reproducibility here in a very, very broad sense. Um, similar or same methods to reach um, uh, similar conclusions. Um, so not distinguishing conceptual reproducibility from computational or so on. But we know from everything that we've heard in the conference and every, um, that there are a lot of um, issues that lead to uh, lack of uh, reproducibility at the moment and that this is perceived as a real problem, especially in certain disciplines. So um, three years ago, the European Commission um, commissioned a scoping report. Uh, Tim Merrington from uh, COS was uh, one of the uh, co-authors of this. Um, and this uh, recommended um, certain lines, um, including dedicated funding lines, testing, testing and scaling of interventions, capacity building, and alignment of policies. And so um, this led to a specific call from the European Commission um, on the theme of increasing the reproducibility of scientific results. Two projects were to be funded, although in the end uh, three were. Um, and um, uh, Inga, Emily and I um, are the kind of three principals re uh, responsible uh, for those bids. And um, so although the calls kind of overlapped in some ways and our projects overlapped, we wanted to make sure that we find synergies wherever possible to maximize um, the kind of return on investment. As Emily said in her, in her talk today, meta science research, there's not a lot of dedicated funding lines, and so there's no point in doing um, the same thing twice, unless, of course, it's uh, for triangulation. So um, just to talk about my project, tier two. Uh, this began in January 23, uh, the start of this year, and runs uh, to December uh, 2025. Um, kind of one of the key elements of our project is that we want to center the concept of epistemic diversity, meaning that reproducibility doesn't mean the same things across different disciplines and maybe isn't applicable um, or is much less applicable as a theme once you get towards certain types of qualitative research or into the humanities. Um, so uh, we center epistemic diversity and investigate reproducibility, especially in social life computer scientists, computer sciences, plus the funder and the publisher context. Um, we have this idea of treating reproducibility as a full stack problem. So we all know um, the uh, pyramid, uh, the um, strategy for culture change from the Center for Open Science, which is that we need to work across all these various levels of intervention. Um, to achieve uh, research reform. Um, and we need to do so in a holistic way and a, a strategic way. We'll use uh, very co-creative approaches to creating and evaluating new reproducibility tools and practices. So this will, means we'll be doing a bunch of um, workshops and um, co-creation events um, with funders, publishers, uh, and researchers over the uh, coming years. And, a key aim is to boost uh, capacity, especially through building on the fantastic work which has already been done at grassroots level to set up the reproducibility networks. So we will have a call, should be open just before summer, um, especially for kind of um, uh, widening participation countries within the EU. So these are uh, 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 countries from, especially from the former Eastern Bloc. Um, to create new reproducibility networks, but also look at ways to um, uh, link these kind of grassroots initiatives with more top-down initiatives uh, like the European Open Science Cloud from the EC. A bunch of great partners, of course, and then... So, um, as Tony mentioned, um, I 
I, well, I was the PI for iRise, but Brexit is still daunting us. So um, thankfully, our colleagues in Charité are the official now leaders of the iRise consortium, um, improving reproducibility in science. We're due to start in September. So this is just hot off the press. We only signed our grant agreement a few weeks ago. And our aims are to provide a richer and deeper understanding of the drivers of poor reproducibility and to conduct a detailed evaluation, um, including actually conducting some primary research studies of the effectiveness of interventions to increase reproducibility. And the way that we've set the project up is really in, in two halves. We've got the kind of toolbox half, um, where we're going to provide theoretical evidence. So we're working with some um, like economists to, to, to provide evidence describing the effectiveness of specific interventions. And then we're also going to produce some empirical evidence that, like I said, conduct some primary um, research testing interventions to see how they improve reproducibility. And then we're going to use that toolbox um, to propose a framework for robust evidence a robust evidence based roadmap for how you develop interventions to improve reproducibility, how you assess their effectiveness, and also how you implement them. And then alongside the project, we've also got a, um, I can't remember what the work package is called now, but essentially a, a DEI work package to ensure that we also, following from the session before, that we include some of these aspects to ensure that we're not marginalizing people as we develop and implement inter in new interventions. Um, and we have a range of partners there on the, on the right of the screen. Yeah. So for Osiris, Osiris started with uh, Mariska Levelang from the Amsterdam UMC and myself being intrigued by the fact that we are clinical researchers and doing a lot of research on patients, in which we are doing, actually doing RCTs, randomized patients to different treatments. And we were intrigued that, by the fact that the, most of the open science interventions and reproducibility interventions are not really tested in that way. Well, for many of those, there's not real, a real reason not to do so. So that's when we started OSIRIS. Um, what we basically want to do is to first understand the underlying drivers and effective, intervention, that, uh, and effective interventions that increase reproducibility. And we divided our project in interventions for funders, for universities, and for researchers, and for journals, actually. That's not on this. But. So that's the first part of our project, and we're actually doing a scoping review for that and a couple of other different reviews. And that scoping review is also the first part of our collaboration with iRISE and Tier 2. Um, so we're now doing that and actually hoping that we get the outcomes in the coming months. So in, to the core of our project is the development of effective and evidence-based solutions for increasing reproducibility. So after the scoping review, we will test the interventions that we find in the scoping review on their effectiveness with randomized controlled trials or observational studies if needed, but as much as possible with randomized controlled trials. And again, we divided that in work packages specifically for funders, for journals, and for institutions. Once we've done this, we want to embed this in uh, the design of research projects, and we want to create a community of stakeholders. So, our collaboration. Well, I think the first success of this collaboration is that we're actually able to present three projects within 10 minutes. So that's, <laughs> I'd say that we started off pretty nicely here. Um, the first thing we want to do is the evidence, uh, sco the, the scoping interventions for, uh, for inter the scoping review for interventions that are already out there. And uh, we've already started that because that deliverable is actually due in a couple of months. And it's basically the core, I think, of many of our projects is we really need that information before we can continue. So uh, that work is, 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 is al has already started and, and is going pretty nicely. Um, we want to um, develop metrics and indications, and we want to also collaborate on the level of um, 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 funders and, um, and publishers and journals um, uh, so that we don't bother them with all our different interventions and the different trials we want to test, but we really want to collaborate on that uh, part as well. And I think that we also hope that if there's other projects that also want to collaborate in that, that would be very useful because we might, um, that might help in doing this a bit more effective. 
We will create events and do community building. We also um, already started a, uh, we've already submitted a grant to try to get extra money for that. Um, and we do self-reflection on our own practices. For Osiris, we want to do an audit. And in uh, tier two, I always forget what you call it. Uh, Auto-ethnography. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> That's also impossible for a Dutch person to pronounce, so um, we will try to combine uh, those ideas about how we can actually, I will say, audit um, the, the, uh, the, the interventions, that, the, the, the work that we're actually doing. So we hope that at the end of our projects, we also have some sort of a guidelines for larger products on how you can actually um, um, audit your own reproducibility within your project. And, of course, we will design um, um, tools and interventions, an observatory and a website in which you can find all the information and everything we will be doing. This is the information, uh, our contact information. Uh, please contact us, because uh, we, I think we started off pretty nicely with this collaboration now. We already have uh, started with doing the research and doing the job. And I think it's important, and I think we think it's important for our community to really get together uh, because we will be way more effective in the research we're doing this way. Thank you for that. <laughs>